Howdy everyone, and welcome back to Harp and Guitar, People and Music. So I think today, for uh, part of Old Whiskey's Blues History, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of them Johnson boys. Uh, specifically Robert Johnson and a couple of other bluesmen by the last name of Johnson. You know, a lot has been written about blues great Robert Johnson. Some true, some not so much. And some are just flat out lies, really, and speculation. It's pretty tough to get to the real root of an autobiographical work with any degree of accuracy when the person has been dead for over 70 years and really all we have are 29 songs and a handful of old photos to go on. Hell, even his death certificate uh, may or may not have been altered in some way, so it's pretty tough to get any sort of accurate records. Now, I bought my first Robert Johnson record in 1987 when I was 17 years old. It was, of course, Robert Johnson, king of the Delta Blues singers, and I still listen to it. I love how his playing and singing sound completely different from one song to the next, and how the tunes themselves make my mind wander to imaginary places of times long, long ago. Places that I never knew. Places I will, I'll never know. But somehow he was able to paint a picture for your mind's eye, you know. And he was certainly, in my books, one of the kings of the Delta Blues singers. But, as I mentioned, there's them Johnson boys. And Robert is not alone, however, when it comes to both my admiration of him as a talented musician, but to the Johnson name as well. There are plenty of other bluesmen named Johnson, but three of them definitely deserve exploration when the terms king and blues singers are tossed around. And those fellows are as follows. Blind Willie Johnson, Tommy Johnson, and Lonnie Johnson. None of whom are related, but all are known in most blue circles as them Johnson boys. Now, Robert was certainly the most famous and commercially successful of these four Johnsons, but I doubt his legacy would have been as huge as it had been had he not taught himself to open his ears and learn what the other three Johnsons were doing or had done and set in motion the means to one day become the most recognized name in blues history. Now, Blind Willie Johnson was born around 1900 in Texas and was deeply rooted in the Texas blues style of playing. He was probably the greatest slide player of all time at that point and used his instrument to augment his voice rather than compete with it. Now, this was probably because with the, the gruff, hoarse, and coarse vocals that, uh, that he employed, there was really no way that his guitar could compete he blinded at an early age, reports say as young as three, Willie was forced to earn a living singing for change on the streets of Texas. But he met with some success by singing and playing gospel tunes more often than not, rather than ragtime or early blues songs. You see, in the mid-twenties, he became a Baptist minister, and in 1927, he moved to Dallas, where he recorded a few sides for Columbia Records, all gospel set to the standard 8 and 12 bar blue structure. In my opinion, the best of these are Jesus make up my dying bed and nobody's fault but mine. Now, to me, this is the foundation upon which Robert Johnson built his bottleneck style, as in with Come On In My Kitchen and Crossroad Blues. Willie's records did well in the South, and there was no reason to think that Robert would not have heard at least one of Blind Willie's songs, either firsthand, uh, seeing him performing on the street corners, as I mentioned, or on record. I mean, in the late 20s or early 30s, these records were already readily available, and not only the, you know, the general consumer public were buying them, but other blues artists were buying you know, some of these Blues Cats records as well. Now, the other Johnson boy is Tommy Johnson. He was a much different figure in blues history and had a very different style than Robert and Blind Willie. Tommy Johnson was born and raised in Mississippi around 1896 and was known as a hard-drinking womanizer. His addiction to alcohol would ultimately be his demise in 1956 when he passed away. 
So he lived to be actually quite a ripe old age, all things considered. Now, he was known to drink anything that contained alcohol, including sterno or canned heat, uh, rubbing alcohol, even uh, shoe polish. So he was, fa he was famous for his high, sort of lilting, falsetto sort of voice, which was kind of akin to a yodel, really. Uh, this unique vocal style, combined with his perfection of the walking bass line on the guitar, made him very well known all through the South and put him in high on the list as one of the founding fathers of the Mississippi blues style. Now, he recorded at least a dozen sides or songs for both Victor and Paramount between 1928 and 1930. But his best known are Big Road Blues and Canned Heat Blues. And is this Johnson to whom the original tale of selling your soul to the devil should be accredited? Not Robert Johnson. You see, Tommy was known to have made mention of this on many occasions. And as late as the 1950s, Tommy's younger brother, Liddell Johnson, mentions the story. So there's no doubt that Robert not only adopted some of Tommy's musical techniques, such as the walking bass and the high-pitched singing and the bottleneck style, as in with, you know, Drunken Hearted Man and Dust My Broom, but he also adopted this sort of deal with Satan sort of story as well. Now lastly, but not least, we have Lonnie Johnson. Now, Lonnie was a born Alonzo Johnson in New Orleans in 1894, and Lonnie was the oldest, I think, but the more accomplished and technically talented of all these Johnsons. He was an influence on everyone from Charlie Christian and T-Bone Walker and B.B. King to Robert Johnson himself. And his career lasted from the early 20s until his death in 1970, and he's credited with recording literally hundreds of songs or sides on his own, and with the likes of Louis Armstrong, uh, Duke Ellington, Victoria Spivey, Bessie Smith, Eddie Lang. And these are just to name a few. Now, he had this perfect combination of a soft and soulful sort of singing voice and the sort of jazz-influenced uh, sort of single-string solos that amplify, exemplified all the, these great blues guitar techniques. Plus, you know, being from the New Orleans area, he, he had a lot of influence with, uh, you know, sort of Spanish stylings of music and Creole music. And uh, again, a little bit of that jazz tinge that was in there as well. Now, his songs were sort of an urban swing with a sense of sophistication that was unmatched even today for the most part. He was a polished professional through and through. Lonnie could also be called one of the earliest crossover performers of all time. His repertoire, as I mentioned, included jazz, blues, but also included pop tunes and ballads that made him equally welcomed by white and black audiences alike. So he performed everywhere from southern juke joints and rough buckets of blood in Mississippi, all the way up to Carnegie Hall in New York City. So Robert was probably, Robert probably learned quite a bit from listening to Lonnie Records. He obviously adopted Lonnie's smooth as molasses voice on many of his tracks, and he used some of the Elder Johnson's chord structures on more than one occasion as well. Now, Robert most likely looked up to, John, to Lonnie Johnson and probably tried to use some of that hip, urban sophistication in many of his recordings, such as From Four to Late. So in my opinion, when you listen to these three artists, Blind Willie Johnson, Tommy Johnson and Lonnie Johnson. You listen to them individually and then listen to some Ronald Robert Johnson afterwards. You can absolutely see how one Johnson influenced another, who influenced another, who influenced yet another. At least I can, anyway. It seems that what made up the total package of a world-renowned blues artist who was as great as Robert Johnson was, is really the, the sum of all parts Johnson. So I think that's going to do it for today for uh, Harp and Guitar and Whiskey's Blues History. I want to thank you very much for popping in and joining us here today. So please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think down in the comments section below. 
And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. So once again, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate you folks popping by today. Thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.